My man, July 14th, you're coming to my backyard, New Orleans, Louisiana, man. Um, looking forward to the fight, William Silva. How's training camp, brother? Training camp is good, man. First of all, I want to thank my manager, uh, David McWhorter, for letting me get this interview. And, uh, you know, for, for uh, letting the fans uh, know more about what's going on in more detail. Um, yeah, training camp has been good. I actually went to California. I went to go in, uh, to Robert Garcia's uh, gym, and I sparred a couple of his guys. And then uh, uh, a couple, like, last week or so. Yeah, last week. Mm -hmm. And now I'm back in Vegas, back home. And um, just finishing camp right here. Man, obviously the, 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 the thing that jumps out is he's 6'1", you're 5'8". Um, he has 26 fights, you only have nine. How do you not let his experience be a key factor or his height and reach advantage? Oh, my God, man. He's scaring me here, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. Uh, none of that matters. Like, I'm going to tell you, you either got it or you don't. I don't fight. My style, it doesn't look like I have nine fights. Uh -huh. There you go. They have, it shows right there. I have a lot of experience. I don't care if he's been professional longer than me. The guy's 31 years old. You didn't mention that. He's an old man. He, uh, he's washed up. Um, I don't care if he's taller. He's going to try to keep his reach away. People don't understand. I know how to box, too. I box. I'm a boxer. I know how to... Um, if you want to bang, I know how to do it in the right way. Uh, just there's so many... Uh, I have so many arsenals. I have so many things uh, that people have yet to see from me. Hopefully, William Silva can bring out something different, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, I definitely want a challenge. I definitely want to fight, you know? Uh, it's just, I dissect these guys so bad, you know? Um, I place my punches in the right spots, you know? Um, and it just goes to show. I'm just, you know, as I'm getting, you know, I'm getting older and I'm getting stronger, you know? I'm still not a man yet, but it's building up to it. I'm only 20 years old. So for his height and everything, we work on things like that. We know how to. We know how to. We know how to avoid all of that. We know how to maneuver and just. Um, trust me. At the end of the day, see a fighter. You know he he has to box right. And for he has sure. To commit. He has to commit in order to show that he wants to fight. Am I right? Definitely. There you go. You pick it off from right there. They have to commit. So there you go. Um, hopefully he doesn't make it a boring fight. I'll make sure not to make it a boring fight. Mm -hmm. You know I'm gonna do my part. And uh, that's about it. You know, the dude knows what he's going to do. He's just going to try to survive and take me to... He's going to try to take me to deep waters, man. But that's a big no-no. You can't. Uh, they, they don't understand. People have yet to see what I'm all about. So just tune in July 14th on ESPN. You'll see You'll see more and you'll see what I'm talking about. No, no, no doubt. And, and you are only 20 years old, man. And uh, the guy... Your last fight was a 14-1 and one guy. You took him out in one round. The fight before that, you fought a 44-fight vet. Is that just a, a testament of the, the fast track that you own, man? You don't want someone with the amount of fights you have because you're fighting guys with a lot of experience. Yeah, I want, I want, I want, I want a challenge, you know. I, I want to fight. I want guys that are undefeated. I want guys that are – but uh, the undefeated fighters are backing up from me. Mm -hmm. You know, I asked Brad Goodman, I asked Bruce Trampler, you know, my matchmakers from top rank. Uh, they're trying to get undefeated fighters and stuff, but nobody wants to accept the fight. So they have to give me other opponents that are willing to and that have experience and I think that, hey, I can take this kid and things like that. Um, you know, I'm not here to duck and dodge nobody. I want the best. I want to beat the best, and that's the world champions. Um, you can name them all. All four of those guys, that's who I want. You know, um, Just to get me my world title that I know I deserve and that, that I know that is mine. It's rightfully mine. Um, I see myself... I give it two more fights, man. I give it two more fights. I'll probably fight for a world title by the end of this year or beginning of 2019, easily. Definitely. Uh, this, this, fight, this fight is huge because it gives me another uh, another step closer. That's what it is. So I train I train my I train my ass off for this all the time. I Every fight I train hard. But now I'm like 142. Oh, okay. What's up? That's what's up. And we got, we got what, 16 days? Definitely. We got 142, 141. Actually, I haven't checked my weight. I just finished working out. I'm probably like 140. That's crazy. That's crazy. And this, this you know, should... I, I don't, I stay ready. I don't get ready. I don't have to. I don't try, you know, work hard to get ready. I stay ready. You know? I was going to say that, man. This your third fight of the year. I'm sure that that's key to staying sharp. And, and we don't see that a lot, especially from, from younger guys. You know, we're starting to see the one or two fights a year. This is already a third one. So I'm sure that helps you stay sharp. Oh, absolutely. But not even that, you know, um, it's just a, a thing you have to implement. Something that I took from Floyd was, although he 
partied and everything, he still knew his craft. He knew that he had to keep working out. Whether mm-hmm. it was just a light run, anything of that sort, you need that. And even when you're not having a fight schedule, um, you just need to always be ready. Um, that way, it's not as hard. You know, you maintain. The most I go up after a fight or anything like that, uh, when I'm not fighting and I'm waiting for a next fight date, it's probably like the most 10 pounds. Okay. I'm going past 10 pounds. For sure. You know, I'm not these... I'm not these fighters. A lot of these fighters that go up 20 pounds. It's ridiculous. See, reason why is because I know the moment I do that is the moment that my body adapts to it because my body is growing. Uh-huh. So, so I have to maintain at a certain level right now because the one title that I need, the one title that I want right now is to be a world champion at 135 before I go up to 140. I could easily go to 140 right now. Mm-hmm. But, but I'd rather, you know, get what I deserve at 135, get the title, and then we'll go, we'll see what happens from there. This is your first scheduled 10 rounder, my man. Have you done anything different in training, or have you always kind of prepared for 12 10 round fights? Yeah, you always prepare for 12 10 round fights, always. Um, you know, I did uh, 10 rounds with Ugas on my second day back sparring. Damn. Uh, uh, Udonis uh, Ugas. Definitely. The 147 pounder. Uh huh. You know, I did 10 rounds with him my second day back sparring. Jeez. You know, so. <laughs> And it goes to show, see, I always stay ready. I always stay in shape, man. Um, you know, we don't, like I said, um, so I always prepare myself for these things. We know how to, I know my body, and I know how to how to maintain my, my form and everything, my body. Uh, you got to listen to your body at the end of the day, you know. Uh, I took a couple of days off, actually. Um, I just needed to rest a little bit uh-huh. just so I could get back on it because, um, you know, we're already ready. We just got to maintain at this point. Man, you t- you always you always talk about the takeover, man, and and you know you're already saying you want the four t- champions at 135. Um, when you look at the landscape of the 135 pound division and, and pointing to the four champions, what do you see in them, and what will eventually separate you from them to where you could take their titles? The way I see it, man, is that nobody's doing it like that. Mm-hmm. I don't care who it is; it's the takeover for a reason. Nobody, no fighters doing it like me. Um, there's just, when you see me fight, you, you're you like, I don't even know what he's got next, man. What is he, what is this guy going to bring to the table? Like, every time it's something new. Uh-huh. These other fighters, you see Lomachenko, you see Mikey Garcia, you see uh, Robert Easter, you see Ray Beltran. Uh, you guys already know what they're going to bring. You guys already know the styles and everything. Uh-huh. Um, for me, it's, it's, people still guess, like, what is else he's going to bring? What's the celebration he's going to bring uh so I'm bringing something to lead on to everybody. I bring something different. Uh, my style is <laughs> is different. You know, um, at such a young age, you know, I'm not even at my peak yet. That's the scary part. It's crazy. People got to realize, you know, uh, I'm very smart. I'm very wise. Uh, you know, uh, when I say I'm an Albert Einstein, it means in the ring. You know, my IQ, I have a high IQ. So I pick up on things. Um, and, and everything just goes to show, man, I was really, I was made for boxing. I was born for this. You know, I didn't choose boxing. It chose me. So, at the end of the day, it's just, it's only a matter of time. That's all I can say. It's only a matter of time. I just keep winning and keep doing what I have to do. And the takeover is going to, and that's just going to, just going to keep going. Uh, and I'm, sooner or later, boxing and everything, everybody's just going to mention me. So, that's the takeover. <laughs> for sure, for sure. Um, father-son combo, man. We've seen him a lot in boxing. What makes your um, dad being your trainer, you being a fighter, what makes your relationship and the father-son combo work? Uh, he believes in me more than I believe in myself at times. Mm-hmm. I need that support. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, he knows what I can do. He's seen me at my best. He's seen, he seen me at my worst. Uh, he knows what I'm capable of. There's so many, so many great, uh, traits that me and him have. We have something in common. Uh, that's what you need. You need to build a strong relationship. And that's what me and my father have, in and out the ring. You know, we joke around, uh, we laugh. A couple things, you know, uh, he'll sometimes, you know, talk about other fighters, and I just, I don't even care. For me, I don't care about any other fighter. Um, you know, but, but at the end of the day, me and my father, we go strong, man. It's a dynamic duo. That's what I call it. We're a dynamic duo, but when, when we're together, it's unstoppable. For um, sure. We're like one soul. You know, he knows. At the end of the day, he sees what I see in the ring. You know, I'll see the same thing. But I'll, I'll decide when I want to do it, you know? I feel you. Um, it's just, man, it's crazy. Uh, it's really crazy. I don't know. I, I'm blessed, man. I'm truly blessed. I'm already rich. I'm already rich in the sense that I have a mother and a father that, that support me. And, uh, you know, that's something that not a lot of people have. 
So I'm grateful yeah. for everything that I have, man. I don't, I don't, um, I don't, I don't basically take anything for granted, man. Yeah. Where I'm at right now, I'm enjoying life, and this is a, uh, and in order to keep it, you gotta keep winning. That's really it. Without a doubt. Uh, before I let you go, man, um, New Orleans is a party city. It's going to be a ruckus crowd in there, I'm sure. For people getting familiar with you or, or seeing you for the first time, what can they expect, my man? Um, actually, yeah, I've never been to New Orleans, so I'm, I'm excited about that. Um, and uh, But I don't smoke, I don't drink, so the only thing I'm celebrating is that uh, this will be my last fight as a 20-year-old. Before I go back into the ring again, this is my last fight as a 20 year old, so that's wow. the only thing I'm gonna celebrate. So I'm gonna make this one count, of course. Uh, exciting. Um, next time you see me in the ring, I will be 21. You'll be you'll be legal, man. You'll be legal when we see you in there again. <laughs> yeah, but hey, like I said, um, for me, uh, for the fight for the fight fans or anything, if you want to see something different or you want to see something that that you haven't seen in a long time, watch Teofimo Lopez. I bring everything and all of that. Um, I'm an entertainer. So if you want to get entertained, just be ready to watch me. Stay tuned. July 14th, it'll be at the Lakefront Arena um, in Louisiana, New Orleans. And um, if you can't make it, uh, watch it live on ESPN. I'll be the co-main event, a 10-rounder, my first 10-rounder. Can't wait. We can't, we can't wait to have you down here, my man. I appreciate the time, brother, and we'll do something when you get down here live, bro. You got it, man. All right, my man. Thanks, brother.